Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to be creating a geometry node setup which will allow us to quickly make perfect mandalas or architectural rows shapes. We can easily change the amount of segments we've got and it will automatically work, deleting out the geometry that would be otherwise getting in the way, and we can change the offset as much as we want of these shapes really quickly and easily to save us a lot of time. So we'll start this off with a cylinder as that's going to be likely to be where you're going to be beginning with this and then we're going to go for let's say a radius of six and then normally this would be something that's vertical if it's going to be on a window so I'm going to just rotate that around the x by 90 and apply the scale. So normally if we just turn this into something that's going to be more like a trefoil shape or one of the segments I'm going to go into vertex mode A to select everything that should already be selected and then G and then we'll X move that across to somewhere around there and then let's Alt and X to symmetrize. That's using Mesh Machine, but you could do that manually. But either way, we've got this shape. And normally, if I just use Hard Ops, I'd come in here and we'd do a radial array and we'd end up with something like that. And this looks really nice. That's what we want from a tree fold shape, except for if I then come into my modifier panel and apply all of those, you'll notice we end up with all of this horrible intersecting geometry, which is just gonna be a pain. We can clean it up, but it'd be really good if we had a way to make this vastly easier. So let's come back to this shape, and we're gonna to need to use geometry nodes for this. Now, individually, each of these bits is relatively simplistic, so it's not actually too complicated. I think most people should be able to follow along with this. Essentially, you can just copy everything out. But where it gets complicated is there's a lot of different components to it, bearing in mind what we want to do. I will say, if you do want this file, it's gonna be permanently up as part of a welcome pack for the Patreon. So if you sign up to the 3D file section, you'll get this and you can just bring it into your own projects. And in Blender 4 and beyond, you can just go to add modifier and you'll have this in your geometry nodes that you've made, which is really helpful that you can just do this really quickly. So let's go through this and start working out what we're gonna to want to do. So the first thing we need to control is for this object, we're going to need to be able to move it effectively upwards depending how far we want our tree forward shape to be. So we're just gonna use a set position node for that. Let's bring that in here and we can then offset this in the Z as much as we want. Oops, no, I do need to apply the rotation for this to work. So make sure you've got your rotation applied. Now you could do this working in any axis. I've just chosen the Z axis or Z axis, depending on where you're from, because that's the likely direction you're gonna be making your mandanas in. So we want to be able to move this as far away as we want, so something like that. So we're gonna need some control over this. Now, because we only want the Z axis, we're gonna to need to break this down slightly. We could just bring the offset node into here, but then that could cause some confusion. So let's just get everything set up for us. So we want to have our combine X, Y, and Z. We're gonna bring that in there, bring this down to the Z, and then put that to the offset. So now over here, I can control that. And we're gonna rename that as offset. So now we can move that forwards and backwards. I'm gonna change that to two for now, just so we can see how this has been moved and we can use that when checking everything out. So we need that to be able to make sure that everything is moving correctly. Now this is the bit that's gonna be important. We need to cut out anything we don't want. Or more accurately, what I'm gonna do is keep the bits that we do want. Effectively, we want to bring in a shape that's gonna come, let's say for example, there, almost like a chunk of a pie, and take that slice out and keep it. Now this is actually relatively easy to do in geometry nodes, which is why this makes it such a better way of doing this. So I'm just gonna bring in a join geometry so we can see both of these at the same time, and we're just going to use an arc. So if I shift A and then arc, bring that in here, and then join that together so we can see it. If I go into X-ray mode, we've got this arc that's here, and we're gonna rotate this. So let's start with transform geometry. So we can rotate this round. I'm gonna rotate this on the X axis by 90. Now this gives us our point. So we've got a starting point here, which we can rotate around. And then we've got how far we want this to go. Now, just for my brain, I want this to start, well, somewhere over here. But at the moment, you'll notice that the zero is also, well, at 90 degrees. The zero is starting here. We don't want that. We want it starting pointing at the Z axis. So what I'm gonna do is rotate this around its Y also by minus 90. So now our start angle is at the top. Now one oddity of this is we'll notice that the start angle is actually going minus, so negative, if we want to go in a clockwise direction. There must be a reason for this, but it baffles me. Either way, 
We want to start this in this instance, because if we're gonna do this as a tree fold shape, we want to have three of these. So we want to cut out a segment here that is effectively, this is a third of a circle, so 120 degrees. So bear in mind that's half of this, we need 60 that way. So we need to set this at minus 60. And we can see that angle's worked out there. My guesstimated drawing wasn't too bad. And then we want a sweep angle of 120. So there, that was really badly drawn. But either way, let's just come over here and get rid of those annotations. Right, so now that we've got this working, we want to be able to set this so that it works automatically. I want to just be able to put in that I want a number of segments and this is going to work it out correctly. So what I need to do effectively is divide a circle by three. So let's just bring in a maths node and we want to have a divide and we're going to want a circle, so that's 360, and we're gonna to want to divide this by whatever our segment value is here. So we've got value, let's change that to segments. We want this to be an integer, so it's always a whole number, and we'll set the default as three. The minimum number probably wants to be three as well. One would do nothing, two is a mirror, so let's go with three, and then a max of, let's say, 50, which seems vastly excessive, but we'll just stick with that for now. Now at this point, even though this looks like this is giving a value in degrees, if I bring my mouse to this dot there, you can see that actually this is 2.094 because Blender works in radians as opposed to degrees. So all I need to do is bring this out and we'll do a two and we want to change this to radians because we've got a degree value here. So now I can bring that value in to my degrees and that should work. I just need to change my segments to three. So Notice now we can change that to four or five and it should break it down to the correct thickness. We also need to do exactly the same thing for the start angle, but the start angle is going to need to be a minus, so it's gonna be a negative number, and it needs to be half the thickness because the sweep is the entirety of that length there, whereas we only want to do half for this. So let's just take this value in radians and we're gonna divide by minus two and that should give us the correct value for this. So let's just drag that into our start angle, and again, if I change this up and down, it will do that exactly as we want. Great, so we're now pretty good to go. The only issue is that at the moment, we want this to be vastly wider, so I'm gonna set this radius to something ridiculous like 100, so it just goes on for forever, it's all the way out here and we want to make sure that we don't, will necessarily need this arc. I mean, we can leave this as 16, but I can actually just change this to one to turn it into a flat edge. And we want to, and this is the important bit, connect at the center. So now we're going to keep this section that's here, basically everything inside this arc. Now there are some other things that we're gonna to need to do with this. So let's just move that off to the side and move this off to the side. We need to, make this actually whole. So at the moment this is a curve, which is really useful because we can just do fill curve. Let's bring that in there. And at this point, we need to have this, well, further back. So let's just translate this slightly using our transform geometry that's already there. And we want this in the Y direction. So we'll go backwards. Let's call this 50, which again should be more than we ever need and then we're going to need to extrude this out. But we need to make this at the moment is just a curve, so let's convert this to a mesh, so curve to mesh, and then we're going to extrude this out, so let's extrude, and we want to offset this by, let's say, 100. So really big, again, something that's gonna encompass whatever the hell we're likely to want to do. Now this has a problem in that it's now not whole, it's got this bit missing, so we want to sort that out. I wonder if this would actually work even with this bit there. Let's not test that out, let's just make sure we've made this as a solid segment. So what I'm gonna do is bring in a join geometry there to join these together. I'm gonna join this with our original mesh, so just there. Now, that also means that we've got these points at the moment separate, so we've got overlapping vertices on each of these corners because we've got this mesh here. If I just drag that out there, so we've got that there, and then we've got this mesh being joined to it. So we need to merge our vertices by distance. And then we've got that sorted. Now one other issue, if I just turn on my face orientation, it will come up yellow, is that this original face is the wrong way round. So we just want to flip our faces. So on our original mesh. 
and then we've got that sorted. So that leaves us pretty good to go on this. Now we've got our segment in the middle and we've got our bit that we want to keep that is going to be inside this segment. Great. So what we're gonna do at this point is get rid of this join geometry. We don't want this joining together. We want this actually having a function. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring in a Boolean. So a mesh Boolean. And then we want to intersect these two objects together. So let's get rid of that. Bring that in there and that in there. And we've now got our segment. And we can still offset this as much as we want and it will keep our shape. And if we decide that we want more or less segments, we can change this and we've got, that's gonna be the correct amount for four. So we've got 45 each side and so on. So now we just need to sort out our radial array. So let's sort this out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all of those, Control and J to make one clear section and then I can F2 and we'll call this segment. I uh, probably want that merge by distance in there as well. So let's bring that in. There we go, so nice and easy to follow. Now we need to sort out our radial array. And for that, what we're actually gonna do is use a circle. So I'm going to bring in another join geometry just so we can see this. We'll do that there. Let's bring this all down so we can see it as we're working on it. And we want a circle. So let's bring in a circle mesh. Now, this is gonna work, we've got our number of vertices, we want this to be three, and let's join that in there so we can see it. Now, we are going to need to rotate this round. So again, let's transform geometry, and we're going to need to rotate this on the x-axis by 90, and then notice in a similar way to our arc, this starts with our tip over at 90 degrees. So we actually want to rotate this round minus 90 so that we've got everything starting in the correct place. And even if we go to far, five, six, that will now put this the correct way up. Let's put that down to three. And then we're gonna to want to instance these points on our shape, so on our triangle. So we want one of them here, one of them there, and one of them there. That was an awful drawing, but you get the idea. Now, the problem we're gonna have with this is as soon as we do this, because we're gonna use an instance on points, once we do this with an instance on points, there's going to be an issue that this is going to put it here where we need it in the center. Now, let me just show you what I mean. So we're gonna use an instance on points. Let's bring that in there. We want this to be our geometry that we're gonna use. So that's being our points, we can get rid of that. And we want this, our arcs, so we can bring that up here, to be our instances. So that's what we've got at this point. Now let's just bring that in so we can see it and we can see straight away we've got a problem because they're all facing upwards. We're gonna to need to rotate them round. We can do that very easily. We just need to find the normals. So that's gonna be the normal of each of the triangle points. So if I bring that in there, when I say the normals, what I mean is we've got this one is facing that way, this one is facing that way, and the normal of this edge or this vertex is facing that way, and that's what we want to use. But Normals don't work if we just plug these into rotation, rid of that and bring that back there. If we plug this straight into the rotation, it's gonna make a, a mess because it's very confused. We need to turn this from an Euler to a vector. So let's bring that in here. This is a vector. We want it to be a rotation, so there we go. And then we need to check this and that will work on, there we go, the Z. So now we've got this working. And here you can see what I was saying, there's gonna be a problem. Let's just zoom out so we can look at this properly. With our mesh circle, as soon as we have a radius of one, we get a gap between all of our points we want to bring together. And when we bring that down, we can get it nice and small, but as soon as we go to actually zero, this is going to give us a problem. It's not going to work. So we're gonna have something that's not exactly correct. Now we could just do this as like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 and now this is gonna work and be so close together that it's not gonna give us a problem. So that's gonna be sort of the lazy version of sorting this. It has got a tiniest gap here, a tiny offset, but it's not much. So that's one way of dealing with this. You could take this down to the point where it is such a small error that it's almost non-existent. The other way of doing this instead is putting this as zero point, let's say one, so there is a tiny gap so from this, all we're gonna to need to do is move, well, these back just a tiny amount. So I can do that once we've done our booleans. 
So if I just bring another set position, just there, 0 0.1, oops, minus 0 0.1, now everything is exactly on point. So this is going to be a slightly nicer way of doing this than creating a little error that we're doing something about with the merge. So now this works and we can move our offset as much as we want. We just need to be able to change our segments and our segments are going to be controlled by our mesh circle. So we've already got segments, so let's bring in our input group. So we've got that there. We can just change our segments to our vertices. And now if I change this up, so we've got four, five, six, seven, and so on. And we can change our offset to be bigger or smaller, however we want this to go. Brilliant. Let's bring this back to our triform shape that we wanted. So we're pretty much there at this point. Let's just bring this in a little bit more neatly. Let's just select those and then we'll control and J and we're just gonna call this F2 and instance. There we go. So we've pretty much got this sorted at this point. We've just got a few little bits that we need to deal with over here. The first is that instances when we create them are not real. So we're gonna to have to realize our instances. Now do notice since we do this, we're gonna lose these nice clear lines where everything was joined together, but that's fine. We're also, while this is creating this and creating these instances, that are, if I just apply this, going to not cause a problem. If I just grab one of these vertices that are joining and press G, you can see them they're not joined together. So let's come back to our geometry nodes. So we're going to need to merge by distance. At this point, we're pretty much sorted. We can come into our original geometry if I want to. So let's go into face mode. So if I wanted to, we could select those two faces and then let's I to inset those. It's gonna cause problems as it normally would. Let's just deal with that. And then go into x-ray mode and we'll select those S and then shift and Y to make those bigger. And then we could select those faces in the middle. So that one and that one. And then let's control and E and then bridge edge loops. So now we've got our center point. We could control an arm, bring that up then go into face mode, select all those faces and extrude those out. And you can see how quickly we can create these really cool mandala shapes. Let's bevel that, so we've got that there. And then let's select that there, and then the other one, and then let's control and B to bevel those. Yeah, pretty happy with how that's working. So this looks great. The only issue we're going to have, and this is going to be a problem, so we should note this down and you should be aware of it, is that in this join here, in fact, actually, let's take off the bevel so this is easier to see. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Is that in each of these sections here, if I just come in and turn off our face orientation, we get a face that's at this point. So basically at each of the joins. Now, this might not be an issue for you. If you're 3D printing, it will be an issue, but it's gonna be very easy to solve. All you need to do is bring in your M panel at the side, go to 3D print. Once you choose to apply it, check all, and then clean up this, so make manifold, and then we've got no issues. So just coming back to this, this is our nice triform creating object. We can change the offset as much as we want including having additional bits in the middle and funky things like that. We can change the segments up or down. It does everything that we need. So I'm just gonna scroll through this so you can have a better look at it. As I say, this is literally copying at this point and this should work. And finally, just a reminder, if you do want this file with this geometry node set up, it is gonna be available on the Patreon and I'm gonna try and make some more geometry nodes that I'm gonna have as part of that 3D design file welcome pack. If you found this useful, please do give this video a like so it gets shared around. I haven't seen anything like this out there at this point. So I think for those people doing architecture, it'd be really useful if people could find this nice and easily. And the more people that do hit that like button, the more likely YouTube is to show it to them. Have a great day, guys.